It's time for The One Thing, taking a look at one particular issue from the Walt Disney Company. And today it is all about Disney fans saying that potentially the theme parks have lost their magic. In fact, while Disney World has 68% of fans saying that the property has lost its magic, the gambling website Time to Play recently released a study based on data from self-described Disney World enthusiasts about the rising cost to visit the parks. According to the study, 92.6% of those surveyed believed the cost of a Disney World vacation is out of reach for an average family. Additionally, 68.3% of people said increases made it feel like the theme parks have lost all their magic. The current cost for a standard one park day ticket on Friday, September the 16th was $134 though prices of tickets vary by date, and as we all have recently heard, prices have gone up in terms of ticket ranges. Almost 50% of respondents said they postponed a Disney World trip in recent years due to price increases, and that got KTLA here in Southern California interested in whether or not people felt the same way about Disneyland and ran a poll of their own. More than 18,000 people responded with 76%, that's more than 14,000 people, saying the magic is gone citing things like the complicated Magic Key Pass system, theme park reservations, and rising prices. Tyler, what else do you think might be contributing to more and more people saying that uh, Disney World, Disney Parks, have lost their magic? I know we're doing the one thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> but I, I really do think it, it's more than one thing i i really think it's just everything kind of compounding on top of each other the it's millennium kinda, falcon mostly is that what you were mostly gonna say the millennium that, falcon. No. <laughs> it's mo come on let's talk about smugglers right now. how terrible that thing is no um it's not it's it's okay it's fine <laughs> Uh, you no, hate it. it. You I, hate Smuckler's Run. I hate it. Don't sugarcoat it. Didn't want to derail. Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> uh, but it's but, more than one thing you said. But it's just it's it's just a lot of things. I think. I think when you when you when you think about doing a trip at Disney World, you kind of go through your financials and everything, and you start to realize this is freaking expensive. It is so crazy expensive. And to top it all off, it, not only is it expensive, but you're seeing all of the things that they're slowly pulling away. And they were using COVID as an excuse for quite some time, I hate to say. I mean, yes, a lot of things needed to change after COVID, but we're kind of in a more normal world at this point. We don't really need to be using that as an excuse as, as often anymore. And I just think that finally we're getting kind of back on track with their offerings they're starting to bring back you know all their shows and you know all the attractions are back and you know it's but it's just like you hear about these reservations and everything you have to make and sure it would be one thing the reservations would make sense to me if you went to magic kingdom if you went to you know hollywood studios and you didn't feel like everybody and their mother was also there you know <laughs> But you go to Magic Kingdom especially, and you're like, this is still just as crowded as it ever was. So why is this reservation system even happening? So I think it's just people are tired of looking at their phones all day long. People are tired of being nickel and dimed. They're tired of losing out on like different offerings, including food, entertainment. And all of those things combined just make people feel like it's not like a great experience anymore. It's like something that you have to hope goes well for all the money you're spending mm. and you know it, it it becomes a stress rather than a decompress and i think that's why people feel that disney world is losing its magic and i i can understand i i get it you know and a lot of times it was such a, a spe like i know we're talking about world more than land but like land especially was such a cool thing to just like show up and see what happens during the day like maybe a couple friends maybe you can talk to a friend on the phone while you're at Disneyland and like they'll be able to stop by for a couple hours later or something and that's all gone it's not it's not something you can do anymore because oh I didn't I didn't get a reservation two weeks ago so and it's a Saturday and all the Saturdays and Sundays are all gone from the reservation thing like before the month even happens so it's just like one thing after another Disney is losing touch which, with what makes themselves so great. And 
it just keeps on happening. So here we are at a place where people feel like they've just been had. Yeah, things starting to stack up for sure. And we uh, turned it on over to you at the YouTube community page over at the Kingdom Report on YouTube and asked you specifically, do you feel like the Walt Disney Company values you as a Disney Parks guest? Here's what you had to say. Uh, 12% of you said, yes, I feel valued. 88% of you said, no, I feel just like a dollar sign. Like just a dollar sign. And Katrina, Disney World is still very much a destination for you as a Californian. Uh, How are things feeling to you when you visit now versus, say, 2019? I mean, it's kind of like what the the votes said. I feel like a dollar sign. Like, I don't really... I feel like they don't care about how you you use your vacation. Like, they don't want to help you. They want to take from you. Mm -hmm. So before, it was like, if, you know if we didn't now we rent a car because it's just it's it's more feasible for us just to do it because now it's like they don't even have the the magical express anymore for families like i feel like that was like such a huge help to families and you just make your reservation you show up they take your bags you don't have to worry about a thing and then all you have to do is just wait in a line hop on a bus you get to your hotel easy peasy you're done and now you have to pay for mirrors connect to get you to the to your hotel you have to take your bags you have to carry them around while you're like handling your children and stuff and and honestly like i've seen so many travel agents upset about it because they're they feel like it's like a disservice to um to their clients because now they you know now the clients are like okay i just spent eight thousand dollars on a hotel for like a Disney hotel Hmm. and then on top of it now we have to book how much to get us to back and forth it's like it's cheaper just to rent a car and then just leave it there at that point Um, and then for me it's just like they keep taking like little things away like the magic band was always just a really fun thing just to have you know to get complimentary for so long complimentary and like you get like a little present and the mailbox and you're like with your name on it so exciting and like that was just always really fun you know and now we don't get that and it's like what kind of like everything that Tyler said they just they take everything away as an excuse and it's just it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like you know they're helping us like that video like a few episodes ago that you played it was everything they showed you you know fast passes this 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 it's free don't worry about it you booked with us you stay with us we take care of you don't worry about a thing and now it's like did you make a reservation yeah (laughs) did you do this for dining well dining 60 days so if you don't have dining well you're sol so um by the way the price just went up again oh yeah you blinked (laughs) it went up by five dollars oh did you do lightning lane Oh, you didn't? Well, well, you're going to have to wait in line for about three hours. Sorry. One of the things that's driving me crazy, too, is now instead of like you used to be able to go to this fantastic, you know, restaurant and get uh, all these good treat, whatever you wanted. You didn't have to be like roped into certain things like Mm. and now like California Grill prefix menu. Monsieur Paul is opening up again. Prefix menu. It's $195 per person. Noticing that too. Like you don't need, you would never go to Monsieur Paul's and be like, I need to eat a seven course meal before. But the reason they're doing that now is because it's going to make them more money. Because if everybody that walks in, yeah, space 220, exactly. Because if everybody that walks in has to spend this much money, then you're gonna they're gonna make more money so it's yeah. just it's 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 just everything it's yeah. a whole culmination of of just all, everything involved so yeah. it was always fun just to get like you go to a restaurant and we just kind of get a couple things and we just all share and eat it you know verse i am now demanded to get an appetizer mm. an entree and a dessert i can't eat that much and it feels cheap it just feels cheaper too. yeah oh do you, you you want chocolate mousse that's your dessert yeah it's like easy stuff chocolate mm-hmm. mousse cheesecake like an upcharge for another kind of dessert, an upcharge if you want, like, like was it Space 220 has that upcharge for like the steak for two or something. So you're already paying for uh, like for both of us to be there, but then on top of it, you're paying an upcharge to get like five more ounces of steak. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it's just a lot. Like they're they're really like just I don't know. It's a good point when it's coming the from towel. All... They're like really trying to yeah. get the most out of us, and it's there's a point where I'm gonna break because yeah. it's just like if every if every restaurant does this whole prefix menu where you have to pay $199 to go eat there, mm-hmm. it's kind of like 
I, what, wh- what? Yeah. Like might as well just stick with, you know, quick service at that point. Cause it's just like, I don't want to eat an appetizer entree and dessert for five days straight yeah. for dinner. Like I can't, my stomach cannot handle it. Yeah, so, it's coming at you from all angles. You're right. Yeah. It stacks up. It becomes problematic. Uh, once again, over at the YouTube community page, uh, we asked you specifically in another poll, is your view of the Walt Disney Company more or less favorable today than it was in 2019? 6% of you said, yeah, it's more favorable. 13% said about the same. 81% said less Oof favorable than it was in 2019. Garrett, you've worked there yeah. and been an annual pass holder. Uh, have you noticed a change for better or worse in the way you feel about Walt Disney World over the course of time? Yeah, yeah, and being a cast member as well as being a guest, you know, you see things differently, and for me, I find it's not as magical, it's not as worthwhile, it's not as enjoy. it's not as magical. It, like, that's simply put, I've talked to, you know, my old college program roommates, uh, Tom and Chris, and they're the same way where they're like, I would love to hang out with you guys and, and see you guys in Florida and do it all again. But I'm, it's not the same. Like the memories are almost more enjoyable than what the reality is right now. They've cut so many things. They've made it less enjoyable for the guests, more stressful now than ever before, especially with G- like, you know, the genie and fast and sorry, not fast as lightning lane. Um, it's, it's not fun and from what i've seen the cast members aren't as happy as they once were there's not as much smile or as much magic you of course get you know some of the veterans that have been there a while and they try and keep that magic alive but now people just see it as a paycheck more than this is me doing a service this is me providing hospitality for these guests who are really happy you see fights more than ever before and i think it's this, people can't handle the lack of magic. It's stressing people out, and that's the truth of it. Um, with all the recent price hikes, it's almost more affordable to hop on a flight, fly to Tokyo, go to Tokyo Disney, which is not operated by Disney. It's just Disney in name, and enjoy theirs because it's a sixty dollars for a one day ticket over there, and it's a lot cheaper. You know, the dollar is pretty strong over compared to yen, and. You know, the Oriental Land Company, they know how to run Disney. They do it very well. They're very successful at it. And you can see it in their high quality attractions, such as the Beauty and the Beast attraction. Uh, Disney World, Disneyland, they are significantly lacking in, I think, quality as well as efficiency. And, you know, the fourth key is efficiency. And the, you know, the second key is show. Wait. Courtesy. Courtesy. Sorry, show. So their third one, like the show is like their four keys. The only thing they're right now getting right is safety because they, because no one wants a lawsuit. But courtesy yeah. and inclusion because no yeah. one wants Efficiency. a lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and inclusion too. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the keys when I was there, man. They added that key after I no. no oh, it's, it's not worthy. Okay, key. sorry. We won't include yeah. everyone. <laughs> it doesn't fit on the keychain. <laughs> but but yeah, Disney World uh, right now it's. It's just not as fun. You walk in there and you're like, oh man, like you're happy. And then something happens and it's like lightning and clouds come over and it's now a dark day, uh, you know, at the most magical place on earth. It's just, it's more confusing and complicated and it's not as user friendly as it once was. I'm hoping that once, you know, the company has a bit more money in its pocket after making back its losses from the pandemic, that things might change, but (laughs) if the formula works and people are spending money, uh, a lot less likely, and we could be in some, for some tough times, which gives competition like Universal the opportunity to swoop in and steal customers away for cheaper tickets and a better experience. And I see a lot of people looking at Universal as sort of their saving grace. Why spend five days at Disney when I can spend two days at Disney and three days at Universal for the same price, if not less than five days at Disney. So Disney, Step it up, man. You're dropping, you're dropping the ball, and uh, you know the the ship. It's kind of it's kind of sinking. Oh, oh, wow! What a Mic great drop. play on words there. Yes. Um, well, and certainly we we do this show because we love Disney. We go to yes. the parks because we love Disney. We celebrate Disney for all of the good that it does, and certainly um, look to Disney as sort of a great hope in the world, one of the last few real lights of the world. So um, when stories like this come along and poll results like that come from you, um, it is troubling, to say the least, and we're all starting to feel it. Where does this go? That's an excellent question. Let us know in the comments exactly how you feel. Have the parks lost a little bit of magic? Are you favoring one coast over the other, or are you going to Tokyo like Garrett? We'd love to hear from you, as always. Tokyo. 
Leave it down in our comments. To all who come to this happy place, welcome.